Well, good evening, everybody, boys, girls, and those of you still confused, namely Thomas Russell and Mike Hegdahl. Good evening. We're back. So it's Saturday night. I'm going to work on some braces. Uh, I spent most of my day wrestling with my little 40 horse Alice Chalmers tractor, which I'll throw some footage of that at the end of this video, most likely. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe in tomorrow's. We'll see what happens. But uh, so tonight we're just going to work on uh, cutting some braces up. We milled up uh, eight more pieces of brace stock last night. That will get us the four remaining we need for the last set of top plates, plus it'll get us uh, two more queen posts set up worth of braces. So, it should be fun, should be quick, easy work. I've got the, uh, the big tractors all plugged in right now. I'm trying to get that thing running. Doesn't like the cold, that's a cold hearted bitch, but once it's running it runs fine. And get that, if I can get that one going tonight, we can move a top plate in here to cut some joinery. And then I can think about maybe getting one of the logs out there over to the mill and I'll worry about debarking it as we need to on the mill just because I, I just want to get it done. But every little night, every, every little step, every piece we cut is just one more piece of the puzzle. These braces will be just one more piece of the puzzle. So I've explained cutting braces numerous times in many videos. So I'll probably do it again because there are a lot of new viewers here and sometimes it's a little tedious to go back through 100 plus videos. So anyway, stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. We'll catch you on the other side of it all. So I have four of these I want to cut first. They're all going to be the same. Now I have enough room here that I can lay out all eight of the new uh, brace pieces we built last night. But I don't want to lay out all eight because it's very easy to go overboard on what you need to do. And it is super easy to go and cut a bunch of them wrong. So, going along with brace selection, where we said before, we don't want giant knots. That one's not too bad. That one's not too bad. You want to pay attention to the figure around the knots. It actually breaks pretty straight around them, which is good. Check the other side, that's not too bad, being as that's a faded side, we'll put that to the outside of the building, as long as the reference face lines up. Let's check the next one over. You got a spot there from a knot, not too bad. A tiny one here, tiny one there, again, not too bad. Check all sides. Not too bad at all. All this stuff here is right on the surface. This one actually carries here to the corner and right up there. Same thing with that cluster. So there's nothing that goes right through the middle of it. That's a really nice piece. Let's check another one. A bit of snow on these. How'd that happen? So this piece here was the mate to this piece. Again, it's about the same. No big knots, nothing huge to worry about. Grain structure is pretty stable around those. Let's see, one more to round out the ones we need. Not too shabby. I can live with that. So we've got four of them. Remember, once again, I've said it uh, many, many times. Look for your uh, brace layout table on your framing square. 30 by 30 inch layout, it's 42.43 inches. That works out to be 42 and 7 sixteenths. So I need to make sure that all these pieces are at least, uh, I'd like them about 46, 47 inches so we make sure we have enough on there to account for the tenon. So that's 50. 48, 50 and a half, 50. Perfect. We covered extensively, extensively over time reference faces and they are also important when you're doing your braces, especially if you have siding going on to it, things like that. You still want your best side where you're going to have finished materials laying up against it. These three sides are perfect, which is not always easy to get on that sawmill. That's perfect. That's perfect. So this one we can lay it out any way we want. It's 
right where we need it. So we want to move down the line on all of these because, again, the more square everything is, the better it is. Perfect. Perfect. I, like, I just like saying perfect. 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 So we have two picture perfect pieces right now, and that is nice. It's really hard. Oh, that's nice. Perfect. I never get sick of saying the words perfect, you know. Perfect. Perfect. Wow, look at that. Three in a row that are just right. How can we complain about that? Somebody find a way. It'd probably be me. Okay, last one. Are we going to go four for four? Oh, look at that. Very good. Very good. All right, awesome. So when you have four sides that are perfect for what you want, you can lay these guys out any way you want. You still want to pick a face to do all your measuring from, because just because we're perfectly square on all these does not mean that they are perfect four by six dimensions. And I can tell you, trying to get the most out of those scrap pieces, I know a couple of them might be a little bit off. So we're just going to check them all. It's four. Right on the money. Okay, so this one's an eighth inch under. This is actually uh, three and seven eighths. So I'm going to set this one over here. That's how we lay that out is going to come into play. And this is also three and seven eighths. So we have that part established. Now we want to check our six inch measurement, see where that falls. And the reason I do this, it helps me develop a plan of how I want to cut that. So that's perfectly six. Perfectly six, six, right on the money. So these are all good that way. So these last two are going to be uh, three and seven eighths. So <coughs> what does that mean? So the three and seven eighths piece, I have to make a decision on how I want to cheat this. Now, seeing as how my my uh, brace mortises are already cut. I kind of need that two inch mortise on there. So we're going to be losing that eighth of an inch on the uh, shoulder of the tenon where it sits into the housing. That's where we're going to we're going to lose it there or on the uh, the width of it. So we can live with it though. We can deal with it. It's on these last two. What we have to make sure that we do when we go to cut these. I can't just I can't just set my circular saw depth and cut all these the exact same. And I have to remember that when I get into these I'm going to have to adjust that circular saw depth or I'm going to cut down into the cheek of the tenon. Not that that would be a major deal, it's only an eighth of an inch, but why do it if you can avoid it just by taking your time and doing it right. So let's get these guys laid out, see how fast we can do this. See how fast indeed. We're going to get our layout tape measured though for this because it just makes everything better.
All right, so doing it that way, I kind of rough these out, at least the, uh, the end cuts there, probably less than 10 minutes. It just it, it goes real fast when you're doing it like that. So, remember what I said, that these last two down here are actually 3 and 7 eighths, so we're going to have to cut those a little bit differently to maintain a 2 inch tenon. So what I'm going to do, now I don't cut these exactly 2 inches because if I cut them exactly 2 inches, they're not going to fit inside the mortise very well. And that's no fun for me, I want them to fit right. But what we're going to do, we're going to lay out the tenons and we're going to drop cut all these to make it quicker. We're going to do it with a smaller circular saw, we'll finish it off with a hand saw, just like we did the last time we did this. Now I want to square these off from the line right here. Square these off to two inches. And just a little bit over two inches from that reference face. Reason being, I said if we just uh, if we just did it that way, these things would not fit. Well, there we have it. Four more cut. Uh, getting down into single digits now. Getting a little chilly. I think it's about time to go in and sit by the wood stove and edit this thing. So, that is the last of the braces for the top plates. Um, so hopefully we start getting the rest of those up soon. There's only four of those left to do and uh, and then it's back to queen posts and I tell you what, it's going to feel great when I get those queen posts stood up and we can sling rafters and I've got the sheet metal already here behind us so that's all paid for, that's all sitting here so as soon as uh, we can get that stuff done we're going to have a roof on this baby. We should be done by spring, like I said I'm, I'm a good month behind schedule with everything that went on. Today I had a monkey wrench again with the tractor so I will include some of that footage at the end of this, kind of little bonus footage from the day. I'll have to edit out all the screaming and swearing and threatening the cows with death and all that good stuff because they were sitting there screaming at me the whole time, right on the other side of the fence, just bellering their asses off. So anyway, hope you folks enjoyed this one. Um, we have probably about an hour and a half total into these four braces, if that, so it's really not too bad. They they go really fast, you know, I get a lot of a lot of viewers will ask me how long certain things take and a lot of them will try to do it and I think some people get discouraged by how long the first few take them. I'm going to tell you, the more of them you do, you're going to get so fast at it, you'll be able to do them in your sleep. Now, these would probably be faster for me if I made a template for them. It's just like a lot of other things I've done. I've made no templates for this project. I don't have any plans drawn out, everything's coming from my head, but uh, it gives you a real good memory for what you're doing, and I don't mind laying them all out, each one, because it's really good practice, uh, technical practice for laying stuff like that out. I mean, you get so, when you lay them all out and measure them all out, it may not be you know, if you get your career woodworker, they're going to say it's not as accurate. I don't, 
I find that I'm just as accurate whether I'm using a template or not, depending on what it is. Now, if I'm building somebody a kitchen, I set up jigs and stuff like that for rails and styles, you know, for frames and all that because it it does make it more accurate, that kind of stuff. But for what I'm doing here, it's not really rough carpentry. It's not really finished carp carpentry. It's in that land in between that's kind of hard to dictate what exactly it is in terms of that. But uh, I find that once I had about four or five of these under my belt, I can lay these things out in my sleep now. You could just about cut them in your sleep. They just It gets very easy. The, the repetition gets real easy. It's the same thing with every joint in the building. When you go to cut your first mortise out and you're doing it by hand, it may take you half a day to do it and then some because you're just not used to working with the tools yet. But don't get discouraged. Keep at it because you're going to get faster. Every one you cut's going to be faster. It's going to be more accurate. But I will. There was a good point on a video I watched the other day about people cutting their first joints and how usually they're perfect, but then the next four or five after that, they get successfully worse. There's some truth to that because when you cut your first one and it's perfect, you tend not to take the time you should take on the following ones because you think you have it down. Don't fall into that trap. Make sure you take the time, do the steps, do everything the same as the first one to the last one. You know, you'll find tricks that make it faster and things like that. But you're also going to, you're going to get better at it. You're going to get faster. You're going to figure out your tools and how they work. So anyway, hope you folks enjoyed it. If you're curious about the uh, tractor repair today, I will tell you that I, uh, the best part, the welding part, I didn't hit record on the damn camera. I got all that welded up and never hit friggin' record. So that's missing in there. But... If you're curious about that, that stuff will be at the end of this one. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you on the next one. Well, here's our about 20th interruption to the barn project of the day. Now, what we have going on here. Now, this is the tractor. This is my little Alice Chalmers uh, 165. Or 160, excuse me, not 165. So this is a little Alice Chalmers 160. It's about a 40 horse machine. It's not real big. It doesn't have a ton of power, but it actually does awesome for the size of it. This is what I feed all my round bales with all winter. It's what I move snow with. You know, the uh, six foot scraper blade on the back. And uh, it's a great little tractor. It starts really well in the cold for a diesel. I can't really complain, but the only issue I have when you have a small tractor, you get a lot of little spindly parts on it, and this three point was no exception. So you can see where that busted off, that, that shaft right there snapped right off. So I have to get creative and kind of uh, kind of jury rig something up here to make this thing work. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this off, we're going to pop this off, and I have right here. A piece that I'm going to make work. This is off of a old case tractor. Who knows what it went to, but somebody's bent this in to use it for something else before. So to go on the uh, to go on the bottom link of the three-point hitch, I have to spread that out. So we're going to have to heat that up and somehow spread that out. And this I need to extend. So I'm probably going to weld a piece in between here, drill a hole in it, and make it so it fits in there. We'll see what happens now. I'm going to lose a little range of motion because obviously I'm not going to have this nice U-joint on there. But it can't be helped right now. I've got to get this thing running and I need it. So, look at that. First try. So I'll get this guy off of here and see what we can do because I've been pitching hay. I've been pitching hay all, all winter so far. And... That gets old after a while.
censorship Hang it all up to dry The teardrops hanging from your upper lip Clinging on, afraid to fly I just welded up that whole damn thing and didn't hit friggin' record. <laughs> yes, I know you want. Hey, it's coming. Quit yelling at me. I get enough of that stuff. Now, I had to extend this. Jeez, <laughs> I irritate myself when I don't hit record. But, just welded this. One side's really nice. One side I'm moving a little too fast. I have some bubbles in it. It should hold out all right. But I've got this welded all the way around. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it'll work for what I need. So we're going to throw this on. It should be the right height. We'll uh, get that tractor fired up and see if we can't get the hydraulics unfrozen. So here we go. Uh, this is some hillbilly engineering here today. Definitely some hillbilly work, but that's all right. I just got to get it done. Okay, let's see. Could I have a tractor? Why have anything on it? Looked like it was factory made, you know. Of course, I could quit being lazy. There we go. Holy cow, look at that. It works. It works. Well, I just got to find a pin. Holy shit. The yeah, question is, will it be strong enough to lift a round bale? I'm sure it'll be just fine. Oh, a lot beefier than what was on it. Got some pins here. Usually carry a few in the tractor, so I got a few extra put in there. Drop it. Here we go, everybody. One more friggin' disaster averted. Uh. 
Not really a disaster per se, but not a big deal, just a pain in the ass to spend half your day trying to search shit out and find stuff to make it all work. Story of my life though, you know. Good to have this back though. I won't lie to you, it's only been broken uh, for a couple months. Then when the other tractor the other tractor went down, just didn't make it very fun. I've been pitching hay by hand and that's an hour every night, you know. Well, another tractor part bites the dust, huh? Okay, let's see what we get. Not bad for a cold start. <laughs> 